this video I'm going to show you how I built this music box. We have been using it on tour with Vintergatan and since it can play by itself it has almost felt like having a fifth band member on stage. I started the whole project by building the paper pulling mechanism. Next I built the collapsible wheel. I made this wheel collapsible because I wanted the music box to fit inside the restricted dimensions for carry-on luggage on flights. I succeeded with keeping within those dimensions but I totally forgot about the weight. The music box weighs 16 kilos and often you can take a maximum of 8 kilos, so it was good thinking and not good enough thinking <laughs> in the end. The wheel has a very simple release mechanism, it's just a groove in the wood that lets go of the paper when the song is done. Next I made the soundboard and to choose which kind of wood to use for the soundboard I set up a simple test where I recorded the music box on different types of wood using the contact microphones and then I could listen back to the lined contact microphone recording from the computer. No. 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 Now oh, this is the 9mm birch plywood. That's super nice sound actually. So the way this soundboard works is that the music box is very tightly fastened to the soundboard and the vibrations of the notes on the music box is transferred to the soundboard. So we have to isolate the soundboard from unwanted mechanical vibrations, for example the DC motors, humming and stuff like that. So I used two methods to isolate the soundboard. So the first method I used was to hang the whole soundboard in these rubber rings. And by letting the soundboard hang in the air freely, the vibrations from the base of the music box is not transferred to the soundboard. And secondly, I started experimenting with isolating the vibrations from the DC motor in itself. And just surrounding it with foam didn't work, so I cut an axe head in two and I used some big heavy bolts and I fastened everything to the DC motor and I hoped that I could sink the vibrations into this heavy mass and uh, it ended up looking like a bird of some kind and then I made a little bird nest for the bird uh, of foam so there is no solid part of the DC motor that touches the plywood and I would say that this setup produced maybe 80% of the vibrations on on that side and the, and the system with the rubber rings for the soundboard isolated another 90% so the difference was huge.
here I'm making the last parts for the support structure for the wheel. I made them really thin and Sputnik-like, so it could resemble an old film projector or something like that. And uh, at this point, the music box was actually done. And uh, we took it on a seven-month long tour with Wintergatan, and it was on stage every show. It actually worked very good. After the Wintergatan tour, I was invited to play in an arena with 15,000 people in the audience with this music box. And that made me a little bit nervous. I started to improve the music box. During the Wintergatan tour, I had put this cardboard wheel on the music box to make it easier to understand what the music box was doing when you see it from, from a distance. This wheel was purely aesthetics, it doesn't do anything mechanically. But now when I was going to play in this arena, they had a 40 meter wide LED video wall and they were going to show macro filmed video footage with close-ups of the music box and I thought that I should do something better than the cardboard. So I built this replacement wheel in birch plywood instead. So this cable is the power cable for the music box and it powers the electric motor and it's a mess and there was a big ground noise so I added this ground. As you can see this could even be potentially dangerous and when you put the music box down in a case this cable is always attached and you have this mess and it's not good. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna cut, cut this off and I'm gonna install one of these. Then you will be able to detach the cable every time you play and every time you put the instrument into a case. So you can use a cable like this and this has one, two, three connections. This also have has ground. Part 3 Ahoy Arena. So, the reason why I've been improving the music box is that I was invited to play on a show in Holland uh, in the Ahoy Arena. Nick and Simon came to my island and I made a version of one of their songs. It was for a television show they, they made, and when I made that version, they invited me to come to their 10 year anniversary concert here. And this arena holds 15,000 people, so I was so nervous for the music box to break down. That's why I've been improving it and securing it a little bit. And I also have a backup system, and I'm gonna show you a little bit behind the stage how that works. So this is nice when you're standing here, the view from the stage. So I want to take me to to these kind of arenas. That would be a big dream. Hi, good morning. Hi, morning. So the concert is playing above our heads. Nick is playing the piano and uh, I want to show you my backup system. So hidden on my riser I had two laptops with a music box pre-recorded. If I noticed a problem with the music box just before going on stage, I could just trig one of the two laptops by hitting space and it would play back the whole song as if the music box would have played it. And I brought two laptops, one in backup for the backup, because one backup is not a backup, as I usually say when I'm obsessing. This is the backup for the backup. It's called Triple Spare. I love Triple Spare. I'm always nervous about things going wrong technically, also when playing with Wintergatan, but that is a little bit different, because if something happened when we play with Wintergatan, I can apologize to the audience and 
talk my way out of it and we play another song and, and everything's fine. This time I was invited as a guest for the show and I was only playing one song and there was no other instrument in the whole arena than the music box making the accompaniment for the song. So it was a little bit special. I think I felt extra responsibility since it was not my own show. I really wanted to deliver. So even when looking at this footage afterwards, I feel my pulse going up a little bit because I was sitting down there and just thinking, did I solder the motor correctly to the speed controller? You know, I was constantly checking and rechecking that the motor could start. And actually one of the workers behind the stage took me aside one day and said, you know, Martin, I, I, I used to be like you. I obsessed like you and uh, I, w I had burnout actually, so be careful. And I think it was a good advice. I hope with experience that I can be a little bit calmer and trust and trust my bad soldering or embrace a little come what may attitude or something. But it's not in my nature. <laughs> I want to say thanks again to Nick and Simon for inviting me. I had so much fun playing with you in Rotterdam. And I'll put a link to Nick and Simon's website in the description box below. I, I wasn't sure if they wanted me to put the whole song because they're gonna show it on television next year. So, so I cut it in the middle. And thanks to you for watching. And tomorrow I'm actually gonna post an extra video explaining how this music box is programmed and some tips and tricks on how you can do that if you buy a music box like this and build your own. So look for that tomorrow and until then, all the best and see you on the next Wintergat on Wednesday. Thank you. Oh, by the way, the music box didn't break down once on the four shows. <laughs> Maybe it was luck. <laughs>